Okay, everyone, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There are some people around you who, as it stands right now, are simply impossible to convert. Even Jesus, the Son of God, said the same thing from his own life experience. This is what he said in Luke 7. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the flute for you, in other words, a happy song, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge or a sad song, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So John the Baptist goes to this extreme in his life of never eating bread or drinking wine. Because if you remember, his father Zechariah had been given the command from the angel Gabriel that he was never to eat any sort of wine or alcoholic drink. And then the Gospels also state that John was living in the wilderness all on his own. And he only ate locusts and wild honey. That was his complete diet. And he obviously lacked any decent friendships because he was all alone in the wilderness preparing for his short and sharp ministry. He was a voice calling out in the wilderness, the scripture says. A lone voice. So John abstains from bread and alcohol for his whole life, and he's a loner. And they conclude, this guy has a demon. Then Jesus informs us that in his life, he went to the opposite extreme. He ate plenty of bread when he wasn't fasting, of course, and he also drank wine. And we know that these two things are the communion elements, so the Last Supper had these two very elements as the critical part of the whole meal. Plus, Jesus hung around with so many people. He had to get away. There was times where there were so many people around him. He was like, we can't even eat or drink. And he took the 12 away. And then he's like, let's get away from here and go somewhere lonely where we can get some peace. And then 5,000 men, not including women or children, ended up following them. And they still had this massive 20,000 crowd around them. So Jesus was the opposite of a loner. Yet these very same people who harassed John for his lifestyle accused Jesus of being a glutton and a drunkard as well as a friend of tax collectors and sinners. They're like, why do you have all these friends for? Why are you hanging around with these sinners, these evil people, tax collectors and the sinners? So John has a demon because he doesn't hang around with anyone and then Jesus tries to hang around with people and they have an ex another way of ridiculing and persecuting him. What Jesus is saying is that when it comes to the people of this generation, I can't win. Whichever way I go, I'll end up being maligned and criticised. Now all of us have these type of people around us in our lives, and we need to be careful that we don't wear ourselves down trying to convince those who are not ready to be convinced about Jesus and God. Someone might even be coming to your mind right now, and you're realising that you have allowed them to sap all of your strength. The lesson that needs to be learned is that there are certain people who have determined in their hearts not to be swayed no matter how hard you try. And that's the season of life they're in right now. So we need to do a better job at discerning who we focus on with regard to witnessing for the gospel and to even a simpler level who we cultivate friendships with. If you keep trying to persuade these people over and over again, you will only end up banging your head against a brick wall. The people Jesus is alluding to here are a total waste of your time because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And the harder you try, the more you'll become an increasing ball of frustration. So you need to give yourself the permission to give yourself some space. As Jesus said elsewhere, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So God wants to protect you from this. And it's also called being as shrewd as a serpent while also being as innocent as a dove. You can be kind, you can be gentle, but we need to be shrewd in knowing who we are to interact with and who we must leave alone for this season. Here's the key. 
You can't reason with people who want to misunderstand you. There are honest misunderstandings, and then there are cultivated misunderstandings. You have to learn to discern the difference. That's the crucial factor, discerning honest misunderstandings versus cultivated misunderstandings. Does this person want to misunderstand me, or are they open to truth, but have just been seeking in all the wrong places? Therefore, we must switch on our spiritual discernment and be smart about the way we interact with unbelievers. And even some believers, when we're debating certain theological beliefs or doctrines, sometimes it's the same thing there. We shouldn't get caught in the trap of believing we have to witness or relate blindly to every single person. Focus on the people who are showing a keen interest and are open to what you are saying, but step away from those who have made the decision to be hard-hearted towards your message. Sometimes it can simply be that we do not command the respect required for them to be willing to listen, so we're actually just the wrong person for the job. So here's my advice. If you know a person that fits that description, take your hands off. Release them out of your hand and place them into God's hands and then simply commit them to prayer. Let God deal with them as he sees fit and perhaps one day God might have softened their heart enough through other circumstances or through encounters with other people that they more greatly respect and they'll come back to you with a soft, malleable heart that is willing to listen. So I hope you've gained some wisdom and some insight that you can apply to your life by watching this video. Thanks for watching to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.